William Gargan stars as Barry Craig, confidential investigator. I knew a murderer once who was planning to get married. So he killed a man for money enough to furnish a house. It didn't work out, though. All he got was the chair. The National Broadcasting Company presents William Gargan in another transcribed drama of mystery and adventure with America's number one detective, Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Barry Craig speaking. It gets dark early these days. It's always cold, and a confidential investigator's business dies a slow death. Maybe it's because the weather discourages romance. Wives stay home knitting. Husbands decide the blonde wasn't born who's worth a trip through the icy city. So I'm in the office, pretending to go through the files, trying to keep the corpse warm. The buzzer buzzes, and I look up. Maybe I think it'll be a fireman. It's open. If it is, he forgot to bring the fire with him. Uh, you, Craig? I'm Craig. Sit down. Yeah. And uh, cold out. That's why I'm still here, Mr. Uh... Uh, Hearn's the name. Joe Hearn. How do you do? Uh, are you in a position to take on a job? A job for when? Tonight. Oh, you're lucky. It so happens I'm free tonight. Now, if you'd wanted me to go to work tomorrow, uh, you'd still be lucky. I'd be free then, too. What's the matter, Pop? Huh? Oh, uh, nothing, just a cold. I ain't so young anymore. Who is? This job for tonight, what's it about? It's uh, uh, just that I want you to go along with me to, to pay a visit. Sounds easy enough. Yeah, uh, I used to have one of those. What? Oh, uh, investigator's license? Yeah. Nothing but the uh, night watchman now, though. Job won't take more than a couple of hours. Would, uh, would 25 bucks be enough? Sure. Here, I, I got the door with me. It's out on uh, Staten Island. Ouch. Uh, it, it ain't too bad. You, you can stay inside on the ferry. Uh, you better meet me around 8.30, hmm? Okay. Uh, down in the Bay Drive corner, Western, 8.30. Uh, place we're going to is maybe a five-minute walk from there. Bay Drive and Western, 8.30. Yeah. Well, I guess I'll see you later, huh? Oh, Mr. Hearn. Yeah? 25 bucks for company on a visit is a little on the rich side for you, isn't it? Yeah, but on this visit... Yeah, I want to make sure I don't get killed. Mr. Hearn didn't pause to explain. I started after him, shrugged my shoulders, went back to the desk and put my files away. A client's got a right to his privacy. I wondered how I'd like being a night watchman if I ever washed up as a private eye. I decided I wouldn't and headed for a hamburger joint instead of a steakhouse for dinner. The ferry had been fine, but Bay Drive turned out to be right on the bay. I didn't care for the result. I was maybe three quarters of a block away from the intersection of Bay Drive and Western when the car passed me. The street didn't run to many lampposts, and the pedestrians were all home. I didn't think the car's driving without lights was accidental. I began to run. I could see Joe Hearn shuffling his feet, trying to keep warm on the corner. The car moved in fast, and... Ah! Ah! Then it went away. No license plates. I got to where Hearn was hugging the pavement and bent over him. 
He'd given up trying to keep warm. He'd never be warm again. Bay Drive ran parallel to the water. Nothing was below it except a crooked shoreline and the cold darkness of the bay itself. I'd flagged a passing car and had the news phoned in. After a while, Joe Hearn had a spotlight on him, the undivided attention of a half a dozen cops and a nervous intern. Joe Hearn wasn't particularly interested. Barry? Welcome to Staten Island, Lieutenant Rogers. Thanks. I could use a red carpet for a windbreak. Hearn hired you to help him pay a visit. To whom? Me? I would have said to who? That's an interesting sidelight on your grammar. Doesn't tell me anything, though. That's because I don't know anything. Hearn wasn't giving out information. Hearn was a night watchman for the coastlines. He worked in one of their warehouses. Near here? Half an hour's walk. Hmm. No help there. His date was closer. His date has been canceled. Nobody spotted the car, Barry. Probably put the lights on again once it got a few blocks away. Trav, uh, were your men able to dig up anything on Hearn's actions just before he wound up here? Landlady at his boarding house said he had dinner there. He stopped off at a place called Old Tyrol for a beer. I spoke to the manager, a man named Grunner. Wound up with nothing. Hearn always had a beer there on his way to work. That's it? Yeah, I hope he enjoyed his beer. They finished with the chalk marks and the flashbulbs. Hearn wasn't a heavy man. They had no trouble rolling him onto a stretcher and taking him away. The last I saw of him was a pair of tired shoes. The right one had a hole in it. I thought maybe I'd try the beer at the old Tyro. I wasn't fooling anybody. The 25 bucks in my pocket was bothering me. I hadn't earned it. The place was full of people. The waiters were girls dressed in costume. I suppose their bare knees improved the customers' appetites. I hoped nobody would start yodeling. Uh, good evening, sir. You uh, want a table, maybe, huh? Well, uh, I'm looking for Mr. Gruner. Uh, I am Gruner. My name's Craig, Barry Craig. Yeah? I'm working uh, for Joe Hearn. But the man is dead, no? I'm still working for him. I'm a confidential investigator. It is very sad what happens to Mr. Hearn, but uh, I have already told the police everything I know. Suppose you tell me all over again. I do not know exactly what the confidential investigator means, but I am a friend of the police captain here in the district. That's nice. He would not like it that I am disturbed. Hearn didn't like trying to breathe through the blood in his lungs. You do not make yourself very pleasant. I will not talk with you more. No? (laughs) Please, you will let go of me. How many murdered men have you ever looked at, Mr. Groner? I say you let go. They're not pretty. Mostly they die with their eyes open. Killer's got so little time he doesn't bother shutting their eyes. (laughs) And what you see in a murdered man's eyes isn't pleasant, Mr. Groner. There's nothing much anybody can do about it except turn up the killer. That's what I'm trying to do. I I understand. I wish to help, only... Yeah. You own this building? Yeah. Coming, I noticed it had two stories. What's upstairs? More restaurant? No. It is storerooms and... and things like that. Things like that. Mind if I take a look? Why do you wish that? Maybe I'm thinking of retiring and opening a restaurant with storerooms upstairs. It is closed upstairs. I cannot permit you... Never mind. Yeah. No, if you excuse, I uh, I go to work. But uh, perhaps you will be a guest of the management, huh? The Wiener Schnitzel here is very good. So is the beer, I understand. No, thanks. For some reason, I, I can't think of what it is exactly. I haven't got an appetite. Good night, Mr. Groner. Welcome to the Bay Drive Precinct, Barry. Hello, Trav. How's the beer at the old Tyrol? What makes you think I've been there? (laughs) 
We've met before. You're bothered about Hearn. Sure. I owe him 25 bucks worth of investigation. Uh-huh. Worrying about money? What else? I won't tell anybody you're sentimental, Barry. Thanks. I'll keep quiet about your reading books. <laughs> that makes us even. What'd you find out, if anything, at the old Tyrol? Nothing. You? You gave us the fact that Hearn was a private eye once upon a time. So? The reason he quit was because the commission revoked his license. They must have had a reason. They had. A good one? Not too good. But they couldn't help themselves. Happened around ten years ago. You going to talk without prompting? Uh, the way it went was Joe Hearn had an office downtown. On the waterfront. Had a lot of jobs for shipping outfits. Was doing pretty well. Until he testified against a man named Pete Solder. They had a law then about testifying against men named Pete Solder? The charge against Solder was smuggling. His lawyer brought in a lot of witnesses. In the higher income brackets, Barry. That made them good witnesses? Well, it helped. The case against Solder was shot full of little holes. Hearn almost got himself charged with perjury. Was Solder guilty? Sure. Ran gambling houses, too. He was deported a few years later. But at the time of the trial, his guilt couldn't be proved. So Hearn had his license taken away. Was that or a perjury charge? Trav, let me have a list of the witnesses that testified for Solder, huh? Yeah, I've got it here. Thanks. Grunner isn't on the list. No. Thanks, Tram. You're leaving? Uh-huh. And going where? Back to the waterfront. Got a lead? No. But you're going anyway. All for 25 bucks? No. I keep remembering Hearn's shoes. What about them? They had holes in them. I went back to the corner of Bay Drive and Western. The cops were gone. Hearn was gone. The only thing left was a blood stain on the pavement. Not much to show for a lifetime. I remembered what Hearn had told me. His visit was to a place five minutes from Bay and Western. It wouldn't have been back along the way I'd come. It couldn't be down Western to the water. It might have been up Western going inland. It might have been a long bay drive where it hugged the shore. I'd invest five minutes along the shore. Hearn's life had been played near water and it ended there. Five minutes was a small investment. But Bay Drive died on me. In five minutes, a high brick wall stared at me. I backed up away from it, and there was a house rising above the wall set deep behind it. Maybe it was the wind that lifted the small hairs out of the back of my neck. I found a gate in the wall. There were lights in the house. Who's that? Open the gate. Now what? I'm paying a visit to the house. What time do you think it is? 2.30 in the morning. There's no time for visiting. Everybody's asleep. The lights are on. They're nervous up at the house. They sleep with the lights on. Now, now. Listen, I don't want to get rough. I'm visiting. Oh, you're on your way out now. Hey, hey. You, you, you nearly broke my arm. Keep your hands out of your pockets. I'm not interested in your gun. I wasn't. You mean you're not. The house, huh? Okay, okay. I don't know what you think you're doing. Paying a visit. You announced me as Craig. Craig? Yeah, Barry Craig. Hey, you're a private eye. Confidential investigator sounds more expensive. What are you so kind of edgy tonight? Maybe I'm always edgy. Dodging in on Mrs. Warren like this won't do you any good, though. I'm not looking for any good. What's your name? Dolan. Got a license for that gun you're carrying? What's the matter? You got a license complex or something? Forget it. That gun been used recently? You keep hopping on my gun. Lay off. They've been out the grounds all night. I didn't ask you. Mrs. Warren run to a butler? He goes to bed early. All right. Get back to the gatehouse. Oh, wait a I said get back. You like to throw your weight around, don't you? I've got plenty of it. Yeah. Only one thing. There's just so much I'll take, and then... And then? Nothing. Dolan, what... I'm not Dolan. So I see. The name's Barry Craig. Mind if I come in? 
That might depend on just who Barry Craig is. Well, he's a confidential investigator. He's got an office in the city, a license under glass, and, uh... And? A necessity for visiting. Does it happen often? No. Well, I suppose there's no harm in indulging you, Mr. Craig. That's up to you. Would you go away if I asked you to? No. <laughs> Come in, Mr. Craig. It's a strange hour for a visit, Mr. Craig. You're up, Mrs. Warren. I keep strange hours. Why did you come here? A man named Joe Hearn was shot to death a little while ago. Oh, but... He was a private eye once upon a time. More recently, he's been a night watchman. Right now, he's dead. Well, I... I'm sorry about that. I suppose investigators are all fine men. They bleed when they're shot, and when they've bled long enough, they die. That was hardly necessary. People don't always realize. Big house you've got here? Yes. Around 8.30 tonight, uh, you were where? I don't really see why I should answer your questions. Do you mind answering? Of course not. Then... 8.30? I was here. I may have been reading. Alone? My husband's dead. Oh. The butler goes to bed very early. But of course, there's Dolan. There's always Dolan. The grounds run right down to the water's edge, don't they? They do. You're a beautiful woman, Mrs. Swan. Right. Thank you. Beautiful and rich. Why did you let me walk through your front door? Meaning that I didn't have to? I'd put it that way. But perhaps I wanted to. Was it my hand-tailored suit or my polished manners? <laughs> your polished manners. Or perhaps the hat you're wearing, it's still on your head. Hmm. In the trial of a man named Pete Solder a number of years ago, another man named Thomas Warren testified on Solder's behalf. Thomas Warren was my husband. I know. Thomas Warren's testimony helped a private investigator named Joe Hearn lose his license. Oh, we're back to that. We never left it. It was that Joe Hearn who died tonight. Possible interest could I... Solder have... knew lots of people like the Thomas Warrens. He must have had something. I hardly knew him. You must have been what? Uh, 18 at the time? A few years older when Solder was deported? Did you still hardly know him then? I'm trying to understand why you're asking me these questions. Hearn was killed a few minutes after he left a restaurant and bar called the Old Tyro. It's run by a man named Gruner. He keeps his supplies upstairs behind drawn blinds and with the lights on. I know nothing about the old Tyrell or men named Gruner. Mr. Craig, why don't you take your hat off? Why should I? Perhaps because I want to see what your hair is like. I'm not a cop. Those rooms upstairs at the restaurant could be used for gambling. I, I wouldn't be interested. Except that Pete Solder ran a string of gambling houses. You're very stubborn. I'll take it off for you. This is pretty quick, isn't it? You're very real, Mr. Craig. Very real and disturbing. I still think it's pretty quick. You underestimate yourself. The world's full of little men, half men. You, you're exciting. I... I'm not buying. What? It's a nice performance, but your price tag's showing. Well, you... You... No. Oh, my wrist. I'd just as soon not be slapped. I'd even buy a beautiful woman. Let's get back to the gambling houses. If you don't mind, I'll show you to the door. You mean he's had time enough by now to get away? Yeah. Too late. The car's gone. Very nice, Mrs. Warren. Would you please leave? You stormed me just long enough, didn't you? To let him get out of here. I don't know who you're talking about. No? But Hearn did, Mrs. Warren. Hearn did. Dolan didn't try to stop me. I hadn't expected him to. Out in the bay, the boats lay at anchor, rocking with the tide. The old Tyrol was still open for business. 
I gave it mine. Out in the restaurant, a handful of people made tired passes at food. The bar was doing better. The bartender had a very high-class assistant. Hey. Yes, sir. What will it... Mr. Craig. Hello, Mr. Groner. You are back again. Huh? Yeah. Surprised? What, uh... What is it you want now? Let's not disturb the bartender. Let's go where we can talk. I do not wish to go Sure any... you do. Only you don't realize it yet. I still say... Groner. I... You know where I've been? It is not my business. I've been visiting Mrs. Warren. That means nothing to me. I... Who is Mrs. Warren? A lady with a lawn sloping right down to the shore of the bay. So? Yeah. We uh, go to my office. Fine. He's upstairs. No objection. Right up among the storerooms, huh? Store? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't hit those yes hard enough. What you really mean is that you're closed up for the night. Upstairs. You say things which I do not understand. Never mind. My uh, office is here. Very pretty. You do not come to admire my office. Mr. Craig, what is it you wish to say to me? How well did you know Joe Hearn? I hardly knew him at all. Uh Uh-uh. He stopped in every night for his beer. It must have been more than a casual thing. No. The cops know better. Well, what I meant is that, uh, of course, I knew Mr. Hearn, but uh, not uh, very personal, you understand? I understand. You served him his beer tonight? Well, yeah, an old customer. And while he was drinking that beer, what did he tell you? Nothing, except uh, how the weather is and... Yeah? And uh, that is all. A couple of boys chatting about the weather. No, Groner. What do you mean, no? I don't like your answer. Please, I'm not being brutal, just making sure you stay with me. Uh, Groner, what did Hearn tell you tonight? I, I'm not well. Please. You're just beginning to feel sick. It'll get worse, Groner. I am not concerned. I'll tell you what you and Hearn talked about. Hearn mentioned the fact that on his way to work, he always passed the Warren estate. He told you that when he passed it last night, he saw someone go in that estate. Someone whose face he had a very good reason to remember. Isn't that what he told you? No. No, I swear to you. No? Why deny it with such excitement, Groner? Why swear to me? I, I, because I, you know what it means, don't you? That's why you're so anxious to get out of it, isn't it, Groner? I, 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 I say nothing. Let's go back to storytelling. Hearn told you that. He also told you he was going to pay a visit with a private eye. Me. Although he wasn't mentioning names, was he? No. no. Don't be so anxious to agree with me on unimportant things. Hearn finished his beer and left. And what did you do? Nothing. Nothing except make a little phone call to a lady, Gruner. Yeah. They've got a funny law. Roughly, it says that if you know about a murder and don't talk, you go to the chair right alongside of the man who actually pulled the trigger. I, I know about this. Maybe you think it's unfair. You'll go right on thinking that until they shoot the high voltage through that fat body of yours. I, I know nothing. I, I, you I... phoned Mrs. Warren. You passed on what Hearn had told you. I... Maybe I did. It is not against the law. What did you think would happen with that information, Groner? What do you think did happen? It is not of my doing. They got to Hearn before I met him. He didn't die very pleasantly. I'm angry about that. Please, Mr. Craig, you are hurting it. Try breathing with lungs full of blood sometimes. Uh, That hurts more. Who did Hearn tell you he saw entering Mrs. Warren's estate last night? You let go of me. uh, I, I tell you. Thanks. I wish that it is on the record that I did not know what will happen. It'll be on the record. Now stop washing the blood off your hands and talk. All right. Then I speak. The men Hearn sees who goes into the war and Get out! Ah! Rona! Nice shooting, Dolan. Come out from behind that door. I've had a bead on it since we came into the room. The angle's wrong for you. Come out from behind that door, Dolan. Okay. Hold it. Drop the gun. Now, keep coming. Hey, 
What? I said keep coming to me. Or do you want to find out if I shoot straight? No. I'll keep walking. That's fine. Now stop. Turn around. Back to me. Face that door you just came out of. Yeah. Now, you start back to the door, Dolan. What? What's your idea? One dead private eye is enough for tonight. So we play it this way. Start walking. I'll be right behind. So if anybody gets nervous and starts shooting, I'll see to it that you don't fall down when you get shot. You can't do this to I'm me. doing it. Keep walking. But he, he'll shoot. The boy in the room you came out of? That was the idea, wasn't it? You were coming in. I was supposed to think you'd been alone. I wouldn't be watching the next room. I'd make a nice target. But I like you better as a target. No. Kick the door open all the way. Okay. Yeah. Better. Much better. Hold it, Dolan. As for you, you can try shooting it out with me. Not much of a chance for you, though. Or you can drop your gun and hope. You may stay alive a little while longer that way till the jury gets around to you. What shall it be, Mr. Solder? Mr. Solder, Mr. Pete Solder, dropped his gun and surrendered to the authorities. I dropped him in Lieutenant Rogers' lap. The lieutenant dumped him in a cell and then... He'll keep for a while. Not too long. He's turning spoiled right now. But Pete Solder... After all these years. Yeah. Funny, he sneaked back into the country and might have got away with it. But the place he picks out turns out to be the one place he should have stayed away from. He had no way of knowing Joe Hearn's route to his job took him past Mrs. Warren's estate. No. So Hearn saw him and... And what? I'm not sure. He wanted me to come with him when he visited the Warren estate. He wouldn't tell me why. Uh, if he'd come to us, he'd be alive now. Yeah, but he was too bitter, I guess. He wanted to make a citizen's arrest himself. Get back to Solder for all the years, the worn-out shoes, the tiredness. It might have worked out if he hadn't talked to Gruner. Gruner, who ran a gambling dump upstairs in his restaurant, who had a tie-in with Solder. And that was it. But, um, what led you to it? Little things, mostly. Something Hearn came across on his way to work led to his death. The Warrens had figured in the reports on Solder's trial. A small boat could land on the estate without being seen. And Dolan said something about this being a night where a private eye would be edgy. But he had no way of knowing about Hearn unless he'd had a hand in his death. Well, it's all washed up. What are you doing the rest of the night, Barry? Go home and... No. I earned my 25 bucks. I'm going out and spend it. On what? A steak. Good night, folks. See you next week. You have been listening to William Gargan in another exciting transcribed mystery drama from the adventures of Barry Craig, confidential investigator.